Breaking news on this Monday night, a federal judge ruling former Trump White House counsel Don McGahn must testify before Congress. A big win in the House, a big loss for the White House. The decision obviously may impact the other White House officials who tried to stonewall or duck these requests, including from the impeachment probe, including, of course, the John Bolton issue. All of this comes with new heat on Rudy Giuliani, which we've been reporting on, along with new reporting from The Wall Street Journal, Shelby Holiday uncovering some of those photos of the indicted Giuliani associates with partners Trump and Trump Jr. And she's on a new article today. Also, we're joined by Mother Jones Washington Bureau Chief David Korn. Uh, Shelby, a lot is flying around tonight, but the, the Giuliani news is very real and it's criminal investigative developments. Uh, explain the import. Yeah. Right. The Wall Street Journal uh, reporting tonight that various subpoenas have gone out and it, it suggests that the Southern District of New York is casting a wide net and they have a very broad investigation going on right now. But in those subpoenas specifically mentioned is Rudy Giuliani and Giuliani Partners, his consulting business. So the subpoenas indicate that the Southern District of New York isn't just looking at Lev Parnas and Igor Furman and what they were doing with Rudy Giuliani. They are looking at and possibly scrutinizing Rudy Giuliani's business dealings. Um, Giuliani denies wrongdoing and he has said that at least in Ukraine, he's had no clients in Ukraine since he became President Trump's personal attorney. But, you know, when you take a step back and look at the, what's uh, been alleged over the course of the past few weeks is Giuliani was orchestrating a campaign to oust the ambassador over, uh, over in Ukraine and also to get Ukrainians, pressure Ukrainians uh, to investigate Joe Biden. And so this news is very significant. And among the charges listed on the subpoenas, is failing to register as a foreign agent, also obstruction of justice, money laundering, conspiracy to, to defraud the United States, mail fraud, wire fraud, the list goes on. More than half mm -hmm. a dozen possible charges. So big news tonight for Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, it's a huge development. And David, this is one of those times where a, a reporter like yourself, who's been tracking all of this since during the 2016 campaign, uh, is really invaluable because I see a lot of things coming together here. Yeah. You know, one of the fairest defenses that Trump's allies made early in the Mueller probe was the worst stuff like Manafort wasn't all done the way Mueller wrote it on behalf of Trump. There was other dirt. Now, that still leaves a lot of responsibility for who's your number one person running your campaign. Yeah. But there was that argument. Uh, put that in the context of what we see here, what Shelby just described. Mr. Giuliani under heat for things he is doing explicitly, right. not only on Donald Trump's behalf, but on the behalf of the reelection campaign, combined with the other breaking story that we're going to stay on, which is the defiance of, of witnesses in the Mueller context coming home to roost. Yeah. Well, I don't think we have enough time to cover all of it, Ari. Um, I feel a little like Carrie Matheson in Homeland, because if you start doing your flow charts here, what the Democrats thought was a very simple case of Donald Trump making a phone call, taking a couple of discreet actions to lean on the Ukrainians in order to get political dirt on Joe Biden and to try to prove that the Russians didn't hack the election in 2016 to benefit him, has turned into a much more wide-ranging conspiracy, uh, or I should say plot or controversy, whatever you want to call it, that involves business deals, perhaps in Ukraine, involvement with Julie. Rudy Giuliani, perhaps with a Ukrainian oligarch who's been indicted in the United States, who's fighting extradition. And there's a possibility that Rudy Giuliani said that he would help him if this guy produced dirt on Joe Biden. You know, the Lev Parnas and, and Igor Fruman indictment that came out a few weeks ago was very narrow, but it involved hundreds of thousands of dollars that are not accounted for. They went to illegal campaign contributions. They also gave Rudy Giuliani a questionable $500,000 payment. So there's really a lot going on here. But you're right. At the very core of this, and maybe this is what Rudy was counting on, he believed, or he was indeed acting on behalf of President Trump to get the dirt and get this information and all the other stuff he thought perhaps he'd have some cloak of presidential privilege um, in order right. to make all these other conversations and these side deals and to deal with the Ukrainian oligarch, whatever was going on. But he got into bed with some dead enders who've been accused of violating campaign finance law. And from that, this is just snowballing out. And I don't think we have a full idea of the size of this yet. Well, you make you make such a good point there that part of what might look now in the light of day like a real recklessness or even 
uh, self-incriminating mistakes mm -hmm. uh, at the time was placed on the bed of, oh, we can stonewall everything. Uh, the Mueller report yeah. ended without Mueller acting like Ken Starr, right? He didn't throw a fastball right at the Oval Office, and we'll wait it mm -hmm. out, and no one will have to testify. And that failed because of, A, this ruling tonight rejecting the stonewalling, forcing Don McGahn to testify, B, the, everything we saw last two weeks in the impeachment hearing, the cooperation of other witnesses, including current employees like Sondland. I see your Homeland reference, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Korn, but I raise you a very simple <laughs> Venn diagram which is I'm not, yeah. there are parts of this that are all the homeland lines, but then there's parts where the Venn diagram is extort election help out of Ukraine with some unsavory yes. characters, some of whom are indicted. And then you look and you see Devin Nunez, as mentioned, working with the same unsavory now indicted yeah. characters. And you say, gosh, yeah. how many people are in the red hot center of this Venn diagram? For you and then Shelby, I want to give you Devin Nunez's semi-response. Take a look. Bottom line, were you in Vienna with Shokin? Yeah, so look, Maria, uh, I really want to answer all of these questions, uh, and I promise you I absolutely will come back on the show and answer these questions. But because there is criminal activity here, we're working with the appropriate law enforcement agencies. David? You know, if someone accuses me of being in a European capital with a indicted guy meeting with an Ukrainian oligarch, whatever it might be, and it didn't happen, I would say it didn't happen. You know, that's about as shifty a response as I can imagine. A member of Congress, and we all, you know, I was in the room, and other people were there watching on TV, sat through and watched him for hours in the last two weeks. If he was in touch with Shokin while this was going on, that's the corrupt Ukrainian prosecutor who kicked off the dirt digging operation against Biden, and he didn't tell anybody that, it staggers the imagination. You know, I also think it's interesting when you look at the reporting and, and the comments coming from Lev Parnas's lawyer that Lev Parnas is ready to turn over his photos, his videos, his his text messages. Uh, the Wall Street Journal a few weeks ago published a story about Lev Parnas's Instagram feed. This is just one social media feed. It didn't include every picture mm -hmm. he had. He also had a Facebook page where he was posting all kinds of photos. The man documented his life quite well. I mean, he took tons of pictures with Rudy Giuliani. He also took pictures with various Republican officials and President Trump. Now, it Shelby. struck me when we were doing that story. He never took photographs with Ukrainian mm -hmm. officials. But Shelby, um, are you if there's if there's evidence saying, with Devin Nunes, you know, it's, are you it saying he did it for the gram? Already. He did it for he did a lot of it for the gram, <laughs> but he also did a lot for Facebook. And we don't have those photos. So there's a lot out there that we don't know. And, and on Giuliani, I know that it, it can be tiresome to even look at what he's saying, um, yeah. but when we cover potential investigations and potential cases, we always look to both sides. His problem is how weak his side has been, David. Um, but this yeah. was Giuliani uh, basically talking about, well, you know, blame somebody else. Take a look. I expected the moment I heard Biden's name. Sure. I told my colleagues they're going to try to kill me because they're going to kill the messenger. But damn it, the mafia couldn't kill me. Right. Uh, your colleagues are not going to kill me. Okay. David. You know, that's what's kind of sad here. I mean, having been in New York at the time that Rudy Giuliani was going after the mob, he was courageous, and he also went against Wall Street traders, inside the traders in the 80s. I mean, he really cared about corruption. And now he's totally on the other side of the coin. And it's very simple. Rudy, if you have the goods, produce them. But every fair-minded assessment is that there's no, there's no fair allegation that Joe Biden did anything wrong. So it just looks like you're trying to trump things up and working with Joe to Geneva and Victoria Townsend, two lawyers for that Ukrainian oligarch I mentioned before, Dmitry Firtash. And it just looks rotten to the core. If he had something to show, I think he'd show it. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, and we will obviously endeavor to continue to include uh, the defenses and other arguments. But they, they are, as a factual matter, quite unavailing. Uh, Shelby Holiday with the big reporting today. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us and we appreciate that.